Hi, I'm Randy Hollenbeck, and this is the Music Roundtable. Today on the show, we have tour manager Darren Perry. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. How's the weather out there? Cold, man. Cold. I just came from Florida, came back to Indiana, and it's freezing. It. We had some snow here in Pittsburgh today, a little bit flurrying and stuff. Oh, is that Pittsburgh's where you're at? Yeah, yeah. Cool city. It's too cold there for me too, though. I like I like to go to Texas and Florida where it's warm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to start out by just getting like a background uh, history about you. Um, what got you into music? Was there like a band you listened to when you were a kid, and you're like, oh, I'd like to get into like that industry? Uh, music's always been big for me, man. My, my sister actually got me into music when I was little bitty. I, uh, I remember sitting with her and her listening to everything from Motley Crue to Madonna and just, you know, back in the day, listening to her music and it just, it kind of stuck with me. And then, you know, school, I got into, to my own kind of thing. There was probably like Nirvana probably turned me from listening to what everybody else listening to to seeking out my own stuff, but uh, I've just, I've always, music's always been big. Uh, I mean, my mom, my mom sang to me as a kid, like all the way, not as a kid, through my whole life till, till she passed, she sang to me. So it's, music's always been there. Did you play like any instruments or were you in any bands or anything like that? No, oh, yeah, I, uh, I, I always say I play enough guitar to sit on my porch and sing to my dog and accompany myself. Uh, I've always been a front man. I sang in, in cover, you know, bar bands, cover bands from the time I was in high school till, I don't know, about five or six years ago. What got you into the, like the music business? Bef like what, what got you to where you are right now as a tour manager? Did you have to like work your way up through different things? It's kind of been a whirlwind for me, man. I, Oddly enough, I got into it. I was kind of, I was in a bad point in my life. Uh, it was right around the COVID time and my mom had passed away and uh, coming out of a long-term relationship. And I had somebody catfish me about a job in the music industry. Some little honey pot trying to, it was all bullshit saying that she was going to get me into the industry. And whenever I found out that was fake, I was kind of at that tipping point where that kind of put me over. And I just decided I was going to do it on my own. And uh, I'd had an offer from a radio show to come on and talk to them. And I, I took that and it just kind of snowballed. Was that Rock Rage Radio? It was Rock Rage. Yeah, Rock Rage. Uh, they was, it was actually their, uh, one of their sub things, Bruise Radio had asked me to come onto their show and I'd come on and kind of talk about, I had a picture, actually this picture right there, uh, got a lot of attention and, uh, they reached out to me and wanted just to kind of know what, what I was about. And then they had me come back the next week and the week after that, then I was offered my own show and I started interviewing bands and I'd worked in factories and bars and coal mines. So I'd had some management experience and I just kind of, flip that into tour management when I started dealing with these bands. Okay. Is that kind of like your brand right there? Mayhem Jesus. Is that like your. Yeah. Man, that's yeah. That's that was, uh, I used to go to these, to music festivals with a group called camp mayhem. And, uh, I was mayhem Jesus. Cause I, when I, I'd see all these people at these festivals dressed up like, like Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles and Spider-Man. And, and everybody always told me I look like Jesus. So I dressed up one year and 
there was a guy that we called Dirty Jesus, and I was Mayhem Jesus, and uh, it just kind of stuck. I, once I started with my radio show, then it just seemed like a good radio persona, and and here I am. Like, what were was your like radio show about? Did you have like kind of like a format set up? My radio show was just a bullshit session. I I kind of. I kind of broke all the rules. Uh, the format kind of went out the window. I, uh, my, I would, my interviews were just bullshit sessions. I would, I would tell the artist, you know, it's nothing political, nothing controversial, just a laid back bullshit session. And that's what I would do. I'd call these guys and we'd just sit and I'd smoke a joint, drink a Heineken. And we'd talk about, I mean, we talked about everything from, I mean, who your favorite Ninja Turtle is to, uh, karaoke to, I mean, just random ass shit. I, I just find out, you know, about how they grew up and, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be a, a radio guy. I want to be your buddy. So I would just like, you know, I'd find out how you grew up, what you did as a kid and find out if we could relate. And if I did, then it was great. And if not, then I mean, that was okay too. What led you to being a tour manager? Uh, a buddy of mine, Kevin Wall, he play, he was the drummer in a band called Kellen Heller. And, uh, he told me one time, he kind of went through the same thing I did with, uh, with the catfish and we became friends. And he told me that I'd be a good tour manager one time. And that kind of stuck with me. And I started like when I had this little renaissance of my life, I, uh, I started going to hang out with these bands. And as soon as one of them mentioned it, it was actually a band called Seasons from uh, Richmond, uh, Richmond, Virginia. I uh, I jumped on it and I I got on with them. And then my buddy Jody Jody Linnell, he uh, he's a, with a band called Transient. Uh, they actually hired me on to be a tour manager, and I went on the road with them, and it went great. Uh, the rock and roll industry is super small, and it's. Uh, it, it's a lot of word of mouth. So if you kind of get in there and you get a good reputation, then you can get more work. And that's kind of what I've relied on. But yeah, I'd, uh, it was all kind of offhanded comments that got me started, really. People people would say some random shit and I run with it. So you kind of like started off with like a small tour and then you expanded from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's grown a, a little bit of time. I, you know, I, and I also like the bigger tours I do, I, I drive for some bands. I, uh, I drive, you know, I, I drove my first big tour was driving for Trapped. Uh, then I drove for Fame on Fire. I've driven for uh, a lot of bands since then. I just got off the road driving for Any Given Sin. And uh, that was a, that was a really fun one. Any Given Sin, Adelita's Way saliva and drowning pool i mean as a music fan it was great for me now what would be like your normal day on tour like your routine how would that flow i mean it depends on the job i'm doing for the tour uh, as a tour manager uh, as a tour manager my my day usually uh, wake up, see where we're at. You know, you wake up and a lot of times you're driving through the night, uh, find out, make sure everything's good. Uh, I'll do a, another quick advance. I advance prior to the thing, but I call ahead to the venue, make sure that nothing's changed. Make sure that I, I actually, I go through the pay and the rider and the parking every time I talk to them, make sure that the pay, I, the, the, make sure that the agreed upon price is paid is going to be paid make sure that the rider that it was agreed upon is going to be there. Uh, just I just kind of prep work for the day. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a day sheet for the band, print out a sheet, letting them know, you know, from the time we wake up, pretty much step by step through the day, what's going to happen. And then when we get to the venue, I will get off the bus, uh, introduce myself to my point of contact, make sure the sound guy is ready for us, find out where the green rooms are, find out what the email or what the Wi-Fi and the passwords are and all the little niceties uh get food orders in right away get water on the butt get all the little little bullshit done as quick as i can and then you kind of deal with what um, 
after that, it's whatever the venue throws at you. Uh, there's, there's certain things that you can get done every time, but a lot of it, you just kind of go with the flow and you, you never know. It, it could be everything from you know, parking is jacked up to merch cuts to, I mean, there, there's always something to deal with. It's just, you wait to see what it is. Any crazy tour stories you want to share? <laughs> that I want to share. I'm actually, uh, I mean, there's, there's always a crazy tour story. Uh, I've had, I've had a bunch of, them. uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which one I should tell, <laughs> which one, I don't know which one I, I can tell. I will, uh, I don't know. We've, we've had a bunch. There was, there was a tour. I'll tell, I'll just talk about a, a string of unfortunate events that happened with me and fame on fire. Uh, this, this tour I was driving for, I wasn't the tour manager, but we were in an RV. Uh, the bunks were all behind the, the back wheels and we had a big trailer. So all this weight ended up leading to eight blowouts throughout a five and a half, six week tour. Uh, that's, you know, eight times, eight tires we had to have changed. And for some reason, every time we had a blowout was like on my day off. So my, my day off, every day off was spent on the side of an interstate or on at a, a tire repair place. And I thought I was going to skate through me and the guys of fame. It was my birthday last year, actually. Uh, last day of the tour, I was dropping off the trailer. They'd flown back from LA and I was dropping off all their shit. And it was my birthday and me and the guys were all going to get together and party. Well, I made it like right to Orlando. I'd driven from LA going to Delray beach, Florida, made it all the way to Orlando on my birthday and like five fifteen in the afternoon and get a blowout. And then my birthday is shot. It's just, I spend the rest of it. Uh, now, granted, shout out to Dan, <laughs> Dan and Paul because the the Your Coley boys came through and they took me out late, late in the night. But uh, yeah, it, I mean, there's there's always something. It's I've had I've had scary like I'm actually starting my own podcast about I'm calling it tour stories because sometimes living the dream is a fucking nightmare and it is just that it's. It's not always so glamorous and, and exciting. It's sometimes the excitement is stuff that you don't want to deal. I've I had an experience with Chris from Trapped that you could like make a movie out of. It's like like horror horror stories. I mean, it's it's crazy. But it, I mean, just there's always something. It's I've heard of Sasquatch sightings on tour. I've heard of uh, up until uh, up until that tour with Trapped. I think the scariest thing I ever saw, I saw two homeless people having sex in a broke down car on an on-ramp and that stuck with me for quite a while. You had to deal with that trauma. I still deal with that trauma. I still deal with that trauma. That's why I drink so much. <laughs> now let's say you guys are on tour. Uh, you have a blowout and you're like, an hour or two away from the venue, what would you do in that case? I mean, you can do anything, you know, hopefully you can get it fixed right away. If not, there's always you, you Uber the guys there and, and send a, you know, a, a van with your a gear. You know, I've had to rent a U-Haul to get people to where they need to go. And, you know, you pack them in and, and an Uber and then send a U-Haul behind. I mean, there's, you do what you have to do. I mean, that's the, sh when it comes down to it, is if it's if there if the show doesn't go on and it's not the venue's fault and it's mine i have so many people i have i don't have 10 people at work to answer to i've got thousands of fans that are pissed off that that they didn't get to see these shows so you have to you know take that you you do whatever you have to do you you get it fucking done there's you get it done and uh you deal with with all the other bullshit later you get the guys to the show. The only thing that keeps it from going is if the guys are sick or injured or things like that. Uh, you know, equipment failures. We've had, we had that on the last tour where the venue wasn't ready for us. We got there, we were there early 
ready to go sound check and all that. And they just, uh, they didn't have the power to back us up. They had speakers blown out. They just, they weren't prepared for us. And those, unfortunately you just can't do anything about and you have to cancel a show. But if, if it's a logistics thing, you, you find a way. I mean, sometimes you, you don't always make money on tour. Any musician knows that. And sometimes the reason you don't make money on tour is because you have to run a semi to haul your shit, you know, expedite it overnight and get you there right now. So, I mean, it's just, you make it happen. You've been off for a week off this Any Given Sin tour. What do you got going on next? What's your next tour you're going to be a part of? Uh, I leave with a band called Lucifer Monday, actually. <laughs> uh, it's a, about a week a week I'll have off and then I'll take off with them for a month. Uh, we're going to go, I think it's, it's like 20 dates. Uh, we're going to hit Canada a couple times and, uh, yeah, I just get ready to go again. Next year we're looking at, uh, I, I've been, I'm in talks with star set about doing some tours with them. I'm working with, you know, it's all in talks. That's my job until I'm on tour. until I have a plane ticket booked. You know, I, I'm, I'm essentially unemployed from one tour to the next. <laughs> I, uh, I've got, I've got things that, that's going on next year, but until, until then I just, I, you wait and see. So are you like, essentially you're the boss or is there like somebody over top of you that says, Hey, we got this tour. No, I, I work for myself. I, uh, I, I book all my own stuff. That's fortunately I've gotten to like, when I first started, I kind of had to take whatever was presented to me. Uh, I've, like I said, it's a small industry. And if you know, once you know people, you know, people and you get a reputation. And now I get enough offers now that I can kind of pick and choose. I don't, if, if I don't think that the people are a good fit for me or it's going to be, you know, just not good, then I don't have to take it anymore. And fortunately I've got a, you know, any given sin, I'm going to work with them more, I, I believe. And, uh, there's a band called Messer. I do a lot of work with that. I, uh, great dudes. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to touring with them in 2024. It's just, you, uh, it's always kind of in limbo. you never know. It, uh, I don't know. It could all, it could all kind of crash down on me tomorrow makes you kind of appreciate today you know like when when somebody offers you a tour and say you already got somebody booked for that tour you're working with do you kind of like recommend them to somebody else that you might know of y yes and no uh musicians i actually recommend a lot quicker than i do crew uh there there's i know a lot of musicians that i'm i'm happy to recommend as far as crew people not everybody's cut out for tour. Uh, just because you can you can drive all night long or you can manage a tour doesn't mean that you're good to tour with. And I don't I don't want my name associated with people that aren't going to represent themselves like I would. You know, I mean, it, it sounds kind of bougie and, and and crazy, but it really is a thing that you know I don't I don't want my name associated with people that aren't going to to do well. So I don't really usually do a lot of recommendations of crew uh musicians i do a lot but uh like drivers and tour managers and things like that i uh, i would hate to send somebody under my my name and it not work out and that's just i don't know it's it's a it's a really weird industry and uh not everybody's cut out for it and i'm, I'm just kind of hesitant i guess on on that end of it I usually just apologize. Sorry, man, I'm booked. Where can we get a hold of you? Facebook, Instagram, email? Uh, yeah, all of them. Uh, Mayhem Jesus on everything. I'm uh, Mayhem Jesus on Instagram. I'm Mayhem Jesus on Facebook, TikTok. My uh, email is mayhemjesus at yahoo.com. Uh, yeah, Mayhem Jesus that's all the questions i have thanks for coming on the show today is there anything else you'd like to add get out there and support music that's if i could say anything to any to everybody it's support your local music uh 
support the small stages at festivals, support the, the opening acts. Headliners are cool. I love the headliners, but these up and coming bands are the next headliners. And if I would have had known years ago what I do now, I would have jumped on board with a lot of these opening acts way back then. And, you know, maybe I'd be touring with Bad Omens right now. But they, that's one band that I always bring up. They were a side stage band that I kind of overlooked because I was heading to a headliner and and overlooked these bad motherfuckers. And I, yeah. So give love to your local bands, local venues.